Welcome to this online course content that supports preparing to take the Maryland Tree Expert exam. The supplemental presentation to the study guide is intended to aid those individuals who are preparing to take the Maryland Tree Expert exam as required by the Maryland Tree Expert licensing law. Anyone seeking to practice or advertise tree care services in the state of Maryland must obtain this license from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. This presentation corresponds to the information in the online study guide. The text of the study guide, version 5.1, may be found at dnr.maryland.gov forward slash forest. Click on the Urban and Community Forestry tab at the top of the page and then Tree Expert Law in the menu on the left-hand side of the website. Maryland Tree Expert Exam, Study Guide Version 5.1, Chapter 7, Safety. American National Standards Institute, ANSI Z133 standards, contain arboriculture safety requirements for pruning, repairing, maintaining and removing trees, cutting brush, and for using equipment in such operations. All Maryland licensed tree experts shall comply with these safety standards while working in the state of Maryland. Each person, employee or otherwise, shall be responsible for his or her own safety and comply with the appropriate federal and state occupational safety and health standards and all rules, regulations, and orders which are applicable to his or her own action and content. Please note that Maryland has occupational safety and health standards for tree care and removal operations. Employers shall instruct their employees in the proper use, inspection, and maintenance of tools and equipment, including ropes and lines, and require that appropriate working practices be followed. A job briefing shall be performed by the qualified tree expert in charge before the start of each job. The briefing shall be communicated to all affected workers. Instruction shall be provided in the identification preventive measures, and first aid treatment of common poisonous plants, stinging biting insects, and other pests indigenous to the area in which the work will be performed. A first aid kit adequately stocked and maintained shall be provided by the employer. Tree experts and other workers shall be instructed in its use and specific location. Clothing and footwear appropriate to the known job hazard shall be approved by the employer and worn by the employees. Workers shall wear head protection that conforms to ANSI Z89.1. Class E helmets shall be worn when working in proximity to electrical conductors. Face and eye protection shall comply with ANSI Z87.1. Chainsaw resistant leg protection shall be worn while operating a chainsaw during ground operations. When noise levels exceed acceptable standards as established by federal regulations, approved hearing protection shall be provided by the employer and worn. Effective means of controlling pedestrian and vehicular traffic shall be instituted on every job site where necessary in accordance with U.S. Department of Transportation Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices or any applicable state and local laws and regulations. All overhead and underground electrical conductors and all communication wires and cables shall be considered to be energized with potentially fatal voltages. Only qualified line clearance tree experts or qualified line clearance tree expert trainees shall be assigned to work where an electrical hazard exists. Qualified line clearance tree expert trainees shall be under the direct supervision of a qualified line clearance tree expert. An electrical hazard exists when a worker, tool, tree, or any other conductive object is closer than 10 feet from an energized electrical conductor rated 50 kV phase to phase or less. Direct contact is made when any part of the body contacts an energized line. Indirect contact occurs when any part of the body touches a conductive object that is in contact with an energized line. As you see in this graphic, the tree branch is in contact with the energized line. 
Conductive objects include a saw, tree branch, or another person. Even in an insulated bucket truck, indirect contact can be made. If a bucket truck is in contact with a conductor, then consider the truck to be energized. Do not simultaneously contact the truck and the ground around the truck. If a rescue is needed and the bucket cannot be lowered, then an aerial rescue by climbing may be needed. In this case, climbing spurs may be used. When climbing a tree, the tie-in position should be above the work area and located in such a way that a slip would swing the tree expert away from any energized electrical conductor or other identified hazard. Footwear, including lineman's overshoes, having electrical resistant soles, shall not be considered as providing any measure of safety from electrical hazards. Rubber gloves, with or without leather or other protective covering, shall not be considered as providing any measure of safety from electrical hazards. Certainly, we've had a number of historic storms recently that involve interaction between trees and electrical hazards. Qualified line clearance tree experts and qualified line clearance tree expert trainees performing line clearance in the aftermath of these storms or under similar circumstances shall be trained in the special hazards associated with this type of work. Aerial devices shall be provided with a point of attachment to secure a full body harness with a shock absorbing lanyard or body belt and lanyard. Fall protection shall be worn when working aloft. Brush chippers, trailer chippers, and towable stump cutters or stump cutter trailers, when detached from the vehicle, shall be chalked or otherwise secured in place. Brush chippers equipped with a mechanical infeed system shall have a quick stop and reversing device on the infeed system, which shall be close to the end of the infeed hopper, located across the top and along each side of the infeed hopper, and be within easy reach of the worker. Vision, hearing, and other appropriate personal protective equipment shall be worn when in the immediate area of a brush chipper in accordance with ANSI Z133.1 standards. ANSI Z133.1 standards requires that when a chainsaw is being started, it shall be held firmly in place on the ground or otherwise supported in a manner that minimizes the movement of the saw when the starter handle is pulled. The chainsaw shall be started with the chain brake engaged. Drop starting a chainsaw is prohibited. Chainsaw safety devices may not be removed or modified and shall be operational. The kickback zone of a chainsaw is the front upper quadrant. Kickback happens while, in making a cut, the top of the bar nose contacts a solid object or is pinched. This causes the guide bar to fly back toward you. Kickback occurs at a rate twice as fast as a human can react. The direction of safe retreat when felling a tree is 45 degrees from the sides and back on either side. Never move away directly behind the tree as you can be seriously hurt if the tree butt kicks back during the fall. Using a bore cut and a release cut will make it easier to retreat in plenty of time. Don't turn your back on a falling tree. Walk quickly away to a distance of 20 feet or more from the falling tree and position yourself behind a standing tree if possible. When manually felling trees, notches and back cuts shall be made at a height that enables the chainsaw operator to safely begin the cut, control the tree or trunk, and have freedom of movement toward a retreat or escape route. The notch cut used shall be a conventional notch, an open-faced notch, or a humble notch. Notches shall be used for felling all trees over five inches diameter at breast height. When performing the tree removal, the notch depth should not exceed one-third the diameter of the tree. A conventional notch is a directional felling cut into the side of a tree facing the intended direction of fall and consisting of a horizontal face cut and an angle cut above it, creating a notch of approximately 45 degrees or greater.
A Humboldt notch is a directional felling cut facing the direction of fall and consisting of a horizontal face cut and an angle cut below it. A Humboldt cut is usually reserved for large trees on steep slopes. An open face notch is a directional felling cut, again facing the intended direction of fall and consisting of two angled cuts, creating a notch greater than 70 degrees. Again, be sure the notch depth does not exceed one-third the diameter of the tree, and the back cut does not penetrate into the predetermined hinge area. When limbing and bucking, the tree expert must stand on the uphill side of the work. Whenever possible, cut limbs on the opposite side of the tree trunk from which you are working. Doing so keeps the tree trunk between you and the saw. Wedges should be used as necessary to prevent binding of the guide bar or chain when bucking up trunks of trees. When a tree expert is working in a tree other than from an aerial device, chainsaws weighing more than 15 pounds shall be secured from falling by a separate line or tool lanyard. And before climbing any tree, inspect the tree in sight for potential hazards, understand the objective for the climbing job, Wear your personal protective equipment and clothing suitable for the work condition and the weather. Don't wear jewelry. Follow safety standards and take precautions and use caution. Carabiners used as part of a climber's work positioning system shall be self-closing and self-double locking and shall have a gate locking mechanism that requires at least two consecutive deliberate actions to unlock. Snap hooks or rope snaps used as part of a climber's work positioning or suspension system shall be self-closing and self-locking with a minimum tensile strength of 5,000 pounds. A stopper knot shall be tied in the end of the arborist climbing line to prevent pulling the rope through the climbing hitch when working at heights greater than one half the length of the arborist climbing line. A hitch is a knot used to secure a rope to an object, another rope, or the standing part of the same rope. A climbing hitch is used for securing a climber to the climbing line, permitting controlled ascent, descent, and the working position. Tautline, Blake's, and Prusik hitches are examples of climbing hitches. The secured footlock is a method used to climb a suspended rope. A Prusik loop fashion with an acceptable friction hitch, such as a Blake's hitch or a taut line hitch, shall be used by the climber when foot locking. The clove hitch, girth hitch, sheep end and timber hitches are examples of attachment knots. Limbs and branches can be lowered by using the clove hitch. Tree experts should be above or to the side of the limb being lowered when large limbs are lowered in sections. The bowline, anchor, and buntline hitches are used as endline knots to hold on to something. Safety is paramount on the job. There are a wide variety of resources for climbers, including books, online videos, training courses, apprenticeships, and more. We hope you found this supplemental presentation to be helpful as you prepare for the tree expert exam. This concludes Chapter 7, Safety. Please proceed to Chapter 8, Tree Support and Lightning Protection.